Hello, welcome to our video on the 100 watt transmitter. As you can see, the AC enters here, and you can see it's all suppressed. This is to stop um, uh, signal from the inside getting onto the cable. This is required for the CE marking in Europe so that you don't cause uh, interference to the equipment that's local to this. You know? It's basically for EMC compatibility. Cables come down here. There are two power supplies inside this. There's one at 15 volts, which powers the PLL driver. It powers the driver on the amplifier here, and it powers the two fans and, and this little uh, ancillary board here. Now, this power supply here runs between 43 and 48 volts. This really is exclusively for the MRF 151 here. This power supply is overkill for the MRF 151 which basically means it's never going to burn out, it's going to last a very long time, typically up to 10 years. Okay. The various DC cables go down here to the amplifier, to the driver and to the PLL driver here. Okay. The audio enters here, comes down here, it's just underneath this aluminium tape just to give it a little bit of extra screening, hits the stereo coder here. The stereo coder then outputs from here back to here with the MPX composite signal. The PLL then develops the 1 watt drive here. The PLL is absolutely ultra stable. Um, it complies with the uh, specifications for the European Union. Uh, specification ETS 300-384. Even got the little trimmer here for the um, fine frequency adjust, which the people never use, but it is required because it's a legal requirement. Um, the PLL is also very robust. The transistor here is a 4 watt device, only operating at 1 watt. This basically is so that if somebody comes along, disconnects this, takes it off, the output will not burn out, okay? It will continue to operate. Okay, the 1 watt drive goes from here, enters into the amplifier here. And then there's a little attenuator here, which buffers the whole thing and reduces the power back down to around 200 milliwatts here. The driver here lifts that 200 milliwatts back up to about 3 watts into the MRF151, which incidentally is a 150 watt device. We only operate it at one watt, uh, 100 watts. Basically, again, it's overkill so that everything is designed to be well over the, uh, the normal limit. We, we, uh, we drive this up to 100 watts. It goes through the matching network here, up to 50 watts, through this 12-pole um, low-pass filter. Uh, under these little black caps are trimmer capacitors. And these black caps are here just to protect them from sand and dust and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it goes through the 12-pole low-pass filter and at the output here, you have a beautiful clean signal. Um, basically, it's virtually unmeasurable on an analyzer. It's normally around neg 80 dB on carrier, a little more. Okay, this goes around here. This particular board here, I don't know if you can see it with the camera. Can you come a little bit around here? This board here, this is monitoring the uh, forward and reflective power. Now, that's right, that's right. You can just come this, this way a little bit with the camera, that's it, and just a little tilt there, that's it. This board here is monitoring forward and reflective power. Uh, the forward and reflective power comes all the way down here and it hits the front panel meter here. Okay, if we can just have a look at the front panel meter here, can we bring the camera down? Just stay there one moment. Now, the front panel meter here this has, I just said, it gets forward and reverse power. That's getting such a good focus on the camera here, so maybe we have to come back to that. Oh, that's better. Right. That's forward power, 100 watts. That's reflected power, at zero. This is because it has a perfect dummy load on at the moment, at the back there. You see? That dummy load goes off into uh, our workshop. Okay. You can hold the camera again for me, please. Now, if the antenna suddenly has a fault, 
or it becomes disconnected or the cable breaks or anything goes wrong with this connection or whatever's attached to it up on the tower, this, this transmitter will go into protected mode and it will limit its output power to about 25 watts. So really it's indestructible. Now, I can unplug this now directly and the transmitter will automatically go into um, reflective power and, and protection. Let me do that. Let me unplug this. You can see the transmitter's powered. It's not going to burn anything out. There's going to be no flashes, no bangs. It's just going to go gently into uh, protective power. Okay. Okay, you can see. Everything's still okay. Let's have the camera and come back down to the front panel here now. Now look. You can see now. Get the thing to come in focus. Sorry about this, I'm on a little difficulty focusing. Right, look there. No, still not having it. Okay. Sorry about the picture quality here, I just don't seem to be able to get the uh, camera to auto focus on the meter. No, it's not having it. Okay, let's. Well, seems to be happy there. Right, that's reflective power. Now, it's a little difficult to see. But we have around 5 watts, it's limiting it to around 5, five watts at the output. That's around 1 point, SWR 1.6. So if it goes over SWR 1.6, basically it's going to say no, I'm not having any more of this and the power is going to be limited. And it's the same on the forward power, no matter whether you put it on forward or reflected. Okay? Now, I can put the antenna back in and the power will restore immediately. Let's just go back and put the antenna in. Okay, you can see that now. And let me go back to the front panel to show you. As you can see, we need to get a better camera for this, I think. Okay. You see, that's the reflective power, and that's the forward power. So the forward power is restored. Everything's running beautifully. Now, I don't know if you've purchased our transmitters in the past, but our 100 watts used to be quite noisy. They had great big fans on them. This is something we've now changed. You can see I'm just talking at a normal voice level, and, um, and you can just hear the fan just a little bit in the background. That's combined with our air conditioning unit here as well. So. If it was just the fan, it'd be a little, probably even a little, a little less in volume than what you can hear now. Now, also, we have here. This is the fan grill. Now look, there's a little filter in here. This will catch all the dust and sand and stop the get inside the transmitter. Because this is the biggest problem we have with transmitter failures. It's when all the dust and sand gets inside. The sand is silicon at the end of the day, and when it gets on top of boards and they get a, a, a fine coating of sand, especially around areas like this, it starts to conduct because the voltages are, are high enough to overcome the semiconductor action in the sand. So you get you start to get conduction of this this sand. It's like it's like a fine dust of sand like a yellow dust so we've got to be careful and try and stop that getting in and we've we basically cured that with this filter at the front so that's very reliable um i just one other thing down here this is the control board now we've put these we put these on so that hopefully nobody's going to go in there and twiddle them but for curiosity if you want to know what they do this one here sets the maximum forward power okay and this will make sure that the thing stays at 100 watts in forward power all the time regardless of the gain of this transistor the gain of this transistor the system gain this is it's like a like a limiting circuit it holds it at 100 watts all the time this does exactly the same in reverse power 
we normally set it between 5 and 10 watts for maximum reflected power. This one here is the temperature control and we've got a little thermistor here. It's a little thermistor. And basically this sets the threshold at, at, at where this thermistor kicks in. Now that's basically there because some clients they will put this on the floor of the studio, they will never clean it and this fan here will get full of sand and will block and then there will be no airflow. Okay, when this happens and there's no airflow, this little, this little boy down here will get hot and then the power will reduce and it will reduce down to maybe 50, even 25 watts in worst case scenario. The customer will contact us and say, my transmitter's not working, it's only doing low power. We'll say, Do you, have you cleaned the fan? No. Okay. You need to clean the fan. Okay. So that's a nice little feature we recently uh, added. I think we've got everything covered there. If you want any other information on this transmitter, please don't hesitate to give us a call or email us. And it will be, uh, be our pleasure to answer your questions. Thank you for watching. Bye.